Welcome to pH and pOH. If we think about the definitions we had for acids and bases, particularly the Arrhenius definitions, we'll see that something like HCl, an acid, ionizes to form H plus ions and Cl minus ions in solution. Whereas a base, something like NaOH, that's going to ionize to form Na plus ions and hydroxide ions, the OH minus ion. And according to Arrhenius, the key part of this that made HCl an acid is that it produces H plus ions in solution, it produces hydrogen ions. Whereas the key part for the base was that it produces this OH minus ion when ionized. We can take a small step forward here to say that the more H plus ions you have, the more H plus, the higher concentration of hydrogen ions, the more acidity the solution is going to have, or it's going to be more acidic. We can say something similar for OH minus. The more OH minus you have, in the solution, the more basic the solution is going to be. But how do we measure the level of acidity or the level of basicity in a solution? Well, you've likely heard of something called the pH scale, and that's what we use to measure that. So the pH scale is essentially a scale from 0 to 14, with 7 in the middle. 0 is the most acidic, so something with a pH of 0 is going to have the highest acidity, or it's going to be the strongest acid on this where something with a pH of 14 is going to be the most basic. So what does that make the middle? If 7 is directly between the most acidic and the most basic, it actually means it's neither one. 7 is going to be neutral. And at 7 we have pure water. Pure water as a substance has a pH of 7. It's neutral. And that's a really good thing to know about water. And acids and bases can be found everywhere. You have acids and bases in your own body. For example, your stomach acid has a pH of 1, or around 1. Whereas your blood has a pH slightly above 7. It's a little bit less than 8, a little bit more than 7. So if this scale represents how acidic something is, or how basic something is, what it's actually telling us about is the amount of hydrogen and the amount of hydroxide that's present. And in fact, pH, that number, 0 to 14, most directly relates to hydrogen. pH actually stands for the power of hydrogen. And since we know that H3O, the hydronium ion, is the same thing as referring to the hydrogen ion, H+, that this is also the power of hydronium. But that's where the pH comes from, lowercase p, capital H. And these two ions, H+, and OH-, exist in a state of balance. So down here where it's most acidic, I have a high amount of H+, or high concentration of hydrogen ions, but I also have a very low concentration of OH-, because if one goes up, the other one goes down. That also means for a very basic solution over here at 14, that I have a very low concentration of H plus ions, but that I have a high concentration of OH-. And sort of the, based on the trend we're seeing with the scale, with 0 being on one end and 14 being on the other, anything with a pH of 7, something that's neutral, so pure water or a solution that has a pH of 7, anything at 7 will have a concentration of H plus ions, hydrogen ions, that exactly equals the OH minus ion, the hydroxide ion concentration. So when these two ions are in equal amounts, equal concentrations, we have a pH of 7, and the solution is neutral. So now we're going to look at two things. We're going to see why the H plus ion is equal to the OH minus ion for pH 7, and we're also going to see where these pH numbers came from. Why is it 0 to 14? Is that arbitrary? Where did that come from? So that's what we're going to look at next. Water, on its own, dissociates or ionizes into H plus and OH minus. So at any given time in some water, there are H plus ions and OH minus ions floating around. But we can also see that for every water molecule, I have one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. So it's going to be impossible if I have pure water for the hydrogen ions to ever outnumber the hydroxide ions because they get made in a one-to-one -one ratio. Every time a hydrogen ion is made, so is a hydroxide ion. And that's why we get equal concentrations at pH 7. The hydrogen ion concentration equals the hydroxide concentration. So now let's focus on where the pH numbers come from out of all of this. We know that pH is related to H plus and OH minus. But we, now we want to know the relationship between these things. And so let's start with water again. We know that there's an equal amount of H plus and OH minus. 
and it turns out it's a very specific concentration that exists. Under normal conditions, you're going to have a 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar concentration of H plus ions. That's the concentration of H plus ions. And you're also going to have a 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar concentration of OH minus. So you may start to see a relationship already between the pH of pure water and the hydrogen ion concentration and the OH minus concentration. But just to make it clear, we're going to look for a pattern here. We'll have a table. We'll look at pH and we'll look at the H plus concentration and the OH minus concentration. So we just said that at pH 7, I have a concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. I'm going to leave out the molar for space here. But the 1 times 10 to the negative 7th is for both ions. Now I'm going to have a little spoiler alert here. pH, the power of hydrogen, is going to be related to the hydrogen ion concentration. There's some relationship there. So I'm going to go through a few pHs now, and I want you to start looking for a pattern. At pH 6, I have a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 6th. At pH 3, I have a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 3rd. Starting to see a pattern yet? Let's do one more. At pH 12, I have a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 12. So what's the pattern here? I have a whole bunch of negative exponents, but if I get rid of that negative sign, the pH tells me what that exponent is. So pH 7, negative 7. pH 6, negative 6. So on and so forth. So that's actually where the pH numbers come from. They're describing the concentration of hydrogen ions directly, but they're just making it an easier to write form. Instead of constantly writing out 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, you can just write 7. So the power of hydrogen, pH, is really just the power or exponent of the concentration. Now there's also a relationship between H plus and OH minus. In water, or at pH 7, we know they're equal. But they're not always equal. We saw on the pH scale that as one goes down, the other one goes up. As we get towards an acid, we have more H plus and less OH minus, and vice versa for bases. So now I'm going to match up what our OH concentrations look like for these same pHs, and see if you can see what the relationship is between the two numbers, H plus and OH minus. Start looking for a pattern. So for pH 6, where my hydrogen ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 6th, my OH is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 8. For pH 3, my OH concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 11. Are you starting to see a pattern yet? Let's do one more. pH 12 is going to give us an OH minus concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative second. Remember that these are negative exponents. So this is a relatively large number compared to this, which is a relatively small number. So one pattern we can see is that as the hydrogen ion concentration increases, starting from negative 7 going to negative 3, it increases, the OH minus concentration goes down. I'm going from negative 7 or 10 to the negative 7th to 10 to the negative 11th. So there's that relationship that we're supposed to see. But there's another more interesting relationship that happens when you add the exponents. If I add negative 6 and negative 8, I get negative 14. If I add negative 3 and negative 11, I get negative 14 as well. If I add negative 12 and negative 2, well, you're starting to get the idea. Again, negative 14. So the exponents of the concentrations always add to negative 14. Now there's actually one more scale that exists, but it's not as frequently used, and that's pOH. If pH is the power of hydrogen, then pOH is going to be the power of hydroxide. And just to run through what this would look like, this is going to be based off the OH minus concentration, just like pH was based off the H plus concentration. So pOH, power of hydroxide. If the hydroxide concentration is 10 to the negative 7th, the pOH is going to be 7. The next one that's 10 to the negative 8, the pOH is going to be 8. For 10 to the negative 11th, pOH is 11. And the last one is a pOH of 2. So just like you could add the exponents of the concentrations to get negative 14, this number 14 is important overall because you can add the pH and pOH of a solution and it will always equal 14. So it's important to keep that a little bit different because adding the exponents doesn't give you 14, it gives you negative 14. So it's the same number you're looking for when adding up the exponents, it's just positive instead of negative.
That wraps up our lesson on pH and pOH. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class. Continue watching if you want to see how to solve a pH equation for problems where the pH is not going to be a whole number.